Okay, if I am graphing an absolute value function in general form, so the absolute value of ax squared plus bx plus c, then the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for the x and y intercepts, just like I usually would. So I'm going to state that in this case, the y intercepts is going to equal y is equal to the absolute value of negative 0 squared plus 2 times 0 plus 8. Or, when these cancel out, absolute value of 8, which is just going to be 8. For the x-intercepts, I'm going to state that negative x squared plus 2x plus 8 is going to equal 0, or that x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. I can factor this down and say that x plus 2 times x minus 4 is equal to 0, or the x-intercepts are going to occur at negative 2 and positive 4. When I'm sketching this out, I can either use a table of values, which means that when I'm taking the absolute value, I can just pick some points and then solve for what they would be. Now remember that I want points that are going to be to the left of the lower intercept in between the two points and then above the greater intercept, just so that I get the full shape of this. So I'm going to need at least one point that's less than negative 2. So I'm going to pick the point of negative 3, and I can go in between and take negative 1, I'll take 0, I'll take 1, I'll take 3, and then I need to go bigger than 4, so I'll take 5. I substitute these values in for x and solve for my y value, and y is going to be 7, 5, 8, 9, 5, and 7. So, I know my x-intercepts, we already have those. So my x-intercept and my y-intercept, which I actually did again right here, is going to be, well, I have the point of 0 and 8. And I have the point of negative 2 and 0 and positive 4 and 0. I already have my intercepts. I can just add in the other points that I also have. So I have negative 3 and 7. I have negative 1 and 5. I have 1 and 9, which is actually going to shoot a little bit above my graph. I have 3 and 5. And I have 5 and 7. And I can actually, if I want to fill this in, just solve for what it would be for 2. And a 2, it's going to be 8 again. So I'm going to have a graph that's going to look something like this. If I'm going to graph it using my general form, then I'm going to start by completing the square, and I'm going to say that y is equal to negative of x squared minus 2x plus 8, y is equal to negative x squared minus 2x, divide the negative 2 by 2, and then square it, plus 1, minus 1 plus 8. y is equal to negative x squared minus 2x plus 1. And when I move the negative 1 out, I multiply it by that negative coefficient, and I'm going to get plus 1. And then I take a square root of this trinomial, negative x minus 1 squared, and then combine my constants, plus 9. So I have a vertex at 1 and 9, and I have an a value of negative 1. So, I can start at 1 and 9.
a value of negative one, so this is gonna be coming down here, and then back two, down four, right two, down four, back three, down nine, right three, down nine, and back four, down 16, and right four, down 16, and then when it becomes negative after these intercepts, it's gonna reflect back up and become the positive version of that. And as you can see, I get the same graph. State the domain and the range. Well, my domain is gonna be x where x e r. And the range is going to be y, where y is greater than or equal to 0, and y, e, r. Express the function in piecewise form. Well, if y is equal to the absolute value of negative x squared plus 2x plus 8, then we can see that it's going to be the positive version, negative x squared plus 2x plus 8, if, in this case, it looked like the original graph when it was between the two intercepts. So if negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. It's going to look like the negative version, negative of bracket, negative x squared, plus 2x, plus 8. If x is less than negative 2, or x is greater than 4. All right, so if you are determining the indicated features of this graph and doing it, in this case, I'm just gonna give you the answers. I'll let you work through the process. So I'm gonna state that the y-intercept is equal to positive three, and the x-intercepts are equal to negative three and negative one. I can graph this out. If you did properly, your graph should look like this. And if I'm stating it in piecewise function, I'm gonna state that y is gonna equal the absolute value of negative x squared minus four x minus three where it's going to look like the positive version if negative three is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to negative one, and it's gonna look like the negative version if x is less than negative three or x is greater than negative one. if I am writing an equation of an absolute value function that describes this graph. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find what my vertex is. I'm going to take another point that exists. In this case, I can take the point of 0 and 8, and I'm going to solve for what my a value is. So if I said that y, which is 8, is equal to a bracket 0 minus 1 squared 
plus 9. Then I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. Negative 1 is equal to 0 minus 1 is negative 1 squared, 1a, or negative 1 is equal to a, which means that my original function would be y is equal to negative x minus 1 squared plus 9. The absolute value is just going to be the absolute value of negative bracket x minus 1 squared plus 9. Now we are assuming that the original function was this one that is opening downwards here. But at the same rate, the original function could have been the one that was opening upwards like this, which means that in that case, I would have a, a value of positive 1, and my vertex would have actually been at 1 and negative 9. We can never know which was the original, so the other possible equation is y is equal to the absolute value of, I have a positive 1 for a, my p-value does not change, but my Q value would be actually negative 9. These two absolute value equations are going to look identical.